On PM Express tonight, staying safe on public transport is a very important conversation we need to have at a time where we know that definitely where people congregate and are in small spaces, that is where the virus is most likely to spread. I'm going to look at that uh, today. I want to quickly start with the updates on the number of cases we have uh, in Ghana as of tonight. Now, we know as of tonight, there are a total of uh, 68 cases uh, that uh, have been recorded uh, in, in this country in the confirmed cases, three deaths. Now, the issue with that is that they are, we expect that we'll have more cases according to what the health experts uh, are telling us. We'll, we'll look into that uh, tonight. And if, if, you, if, if you're one of those who are skeptical, we know that the, the case has increased and you can see the figures there. Uh, as it shows 24 hours bringing the total number to 68. Now, we also know today that the transport has become such a major, a major part of this particular fight. Um, there are many people who are calling for some form of intervention when it comes to transport. We'll look at that tonight. Stay with us. When we return, we have the guests who join us uh, in this particular discussion. And thank you for staying with us here on PM Express. On the show tonight is Dr. Godfred Achadakwa. He is a road safety and transportation consultant. He's also the CEO with the Road Safety and Transportation Consultancy Limited. Thank you very much for joining us You're here welcome. on PM Express. Also joining us uh, via phone is the, is the chairman of the Ghana Private uh, Road Transport Union. He is Kwame uh, Kuma. Uh, also join us on the phone. I'm grateful, sir, for joining us. Uh, Dr. John Amoisi. Is a lecturer at Global Health Department, KNUST, and leader of uh, Global Health and Infectious Disease uh, Research Center at KCCR. He's also joining us. We'll be speaking also to uh, Dr. Dennis Lai, he's the National Coordinator for the uh, Port Health of the Ghana Health Service. I want to quickly start with uh, Mr. Kwame Kuma, who is the chairman of the, of the GPRTU, who's joined us on the telephone line. Mr. Kuma, thank you for your time here on PM Express. Thank you. Great. I want to start by clarifying um, some reports making the rounds tonight that a GPRTU has taken the decision from tomorrow to reduce the number of passengers in your commercial vehicles. Is that true? Yes, I beg you. We haven't. We have discussed it, and we are going. We are going to meet on Friday, meet uh, the minister uh, and discuss them and finalize it. So, after the first uh, the meeting on Friday before it will come out for everybody to know what they are doing. Okay. So it, it isn't true that, that a decision has been taken on this yet? We have discussed with the president. Uh, president we met uh, yesterday with the president, and we have discussed a uh, lot of these things. So we are meeting the ministry on Friday, with all the stakeholders. So after the Friday meeting, we will come out with a communicate for everybody to hear what is. Mm. How did the meeting with the president go? Oh, about the coronavirus, uh, how you try and manage and make sure that the sickness won't be a distance. So uh, 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 President uh, asked everybody to bring his view for everybody to uh, uh, should bring his view for us to discuss about it. So uh, all the operators, everybody come, come on board. So, so we discuss it and we conclude this on Friday. We are going to meet the ministry. And from there, you come out with the community for everybody to know what we discuss about. Give me about the the certain uh, the 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 certain arrangement and everything. You discuss it and come out on a Friday. So, as far as the GPL two is concerned, I'm sure you are thinking along some lines. Well, how are, how are your members? How are your members taking 
the issue with the coronavirus, knowing what we've heard from health experts about the social distancing and keep, not keeping people together. What's the reaction among GPLTU, commercial drivers, etc., on this? Uh, talk about the coronavirus is a serious issue. Everybody is, 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 think, everybody is thinking about it. And we are for putting measures. If you go to the station, you make sure that you meet. Everybody should have a bucket uh, with a tap and the soap and the tissue for, uh, for the passenger to clean their hand before joining the car. And then sanitizer also for, for them to clean their hands. And we, we pray that with the car owners also to try and buy the, some of the sanitizer for the drivers to put their car inside if somebody is joining the roadside side so they can give it to me to clean the sign. So uh, we have put the measures and about uh, people selling uh, medicine in the car inside also we have uh, put on stop on that. At the same time, uh, uh, a lot of pastors preaching on the car also we have put on stop on uh, that one. So, and at the same time, uh, joining the car argument and who balu who balu also we have already put on stop about that. So all of us we are we are fighting for the uh, the coronavirus. Make sure that it's cured. I want to bring in Dr. John Amoisi, he's lecturer, Global Health Department at the KNUSC. He's also leader, uh, Global Health Inf and Infectious Disease Research Center. Um, Dr. Amoisi, why is transportation, as I've heard, such a potent avenue for the spread of such a dangerous virus? Well, thank you very much for having me uh, this evening. And uh, greetings to all your listeners. Um, we are certainly in, in dire times, and uh, we're happy to contribute in whatever way we can to educate the public. Now, um, public transportation is what we call the, the lifeblood of cities and towns, because it is what, what I refer to as a melting pot, where people from different places converge, they interact, and then they, they disperse. So what this means is that you have people coming from all kinds of places, meeting together, and then going away and exchanging all kinds of things that may not be seen by the naked eye, including viruses and other microbes. And public transportation is also a confined space, often with limited ventilation relative to what you'd have on the outside. And so it is a place which is highly vulnerable um, to the spread of infections, mm. at least in theory. But it's also very interesting if you look at what the literature says about public transportation and the risk of, of diseases, particularly infections, and even more specifically, um, influenza-type viruses, like you know what this coronavirus causes. Um, the evidence from the literature shows that actually people who ride on public transportation are less likely to get sick. Now, this is largely because these are people who are exposed a lot to these pathogens and so must have developed some kind of um, immunity uh, to most of them. But of course, coronavirus is new. And so nobody in theory would have any significant immunity to that. So that theory, that, that, that theory may not necessarily hold. So when you think about it, we, we do believe that um, the public transport system is really one of the major uh, places where people can pick up infections because there's contact with individuals, contact with all kinds of surfaces, from plastic to paper to metal um, and to, you know, just people speaking and the, the fluids coming out of their mouth and landing on people. Uh, and so it's really a melting pot that needs to be watched very carefully. Okay, so the, the, so what, what you're saying is we cannot afford to have business as usual with the sort of transport network that we have, and particularly in a country like ours, where transportation it's, uh, doesn't follow any particular rule in terms of how many people can be in a bus. You say business as usual must end, I guess. Well, you are putting the words in my mouth, and I might as well you know, chew them and swallow, uh, because, because the point you make is, is really valid. Business as usual cannot continue if we want to be successful in stopping this coronavirus. Now, this also means that there will be some amount of collateral damage. And I believe uh, 
um, pretty sincerely, even though I don't have any um, confirmed information that this is what may be uh, really um, delaying any decision regarding a, a lockdown as has been called for in many circles, because um, a lot of thinking would need to go into what the alternatives would be, yeah. not even just for the general population, but also for the essential service workers. So you want to think about the nurse, the doctor, uh, the policeman, um, the the fire service person who would need to get to work. And now if you shut down public transportation, how are they going to move? Are we going to maybe think about repurposing Metro Mass so that it picks people up? Okay, what would be the converging points? Do we have enough of these buses? You want to think about disinfecting these buses. It's a lot of thinking to do before you can put a total curb on um, public transportation. So I really like the question that you asked um, the chairman of the, of the, of the GPRTU, and I was, I was hoping he was going to say yes, mm -hmm. which is whatever they can do at this stage to begin to limit the, the contact between individuals in our transportation system, I will plead with them to do. It will come at a cost, because if you have four people sitting in a row, on a row in a trot row and you're not asking for no more than two, that's a huge loss right there. But for now, I would really urge them to take one for the Ghanaian population till there is a firm decision on what the next step would be. Okay, great. Stay with me. I want to bring in uh, Dr. Achina Dakwa. Doc, so w w you know how the local transportation system is and the way we run it over, over time. Watching where we are, what should be happening now? Yeah. You know, the way our the buses, the way the seating arrangements are, are so congested. Mm. When you take a normal U-turn bus, it's about nine meters long. Mm -hmm. Now, our health experts are asking us to leave one meter distance, mm -hmm. I mean spacing. Now, now, when you talk about one meter, one meter is just from the tip here to my shoulder here. Yeah. Look at it. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the width of the bus it means only two people can sit on the five seat round and then the 13 seats for that the the, the diameter mm -hmm. they have 13 seats arrangements mm. now for us to maintain nine at one meter distance that means that we have to have nine seats instead of 13. Mm. so for 13 times two people into a seat that means that a bus that can take about 65 is now going to take about uh, uh, nine times two, 80. Wow. Yes. I mean, for us to qualify for the expected social distancing that we are all talking about. But, but this is interesting. So this is a typical U-turn bus. Yes, typical So you say, just repeat the numbers again. Bars that will normally take um, 60. 65. Will take now 18. It should be nine. Just so we can comply with, yes, the, with the, the directive. Yes, with the one distance. Okay. Uh, quickly, let me, let me bring in um, uh, Mr. Kuma again. Just to see how that will translate to the trotros. Yeah. Okay, so that we could all understand what we are dealing with. And uh, Mr. Kuma is still with me. Hello, Mr. Kuma. Yes, my dear. Yes. Brother. So for the for the for a, a trotro, for example, normally how many people will the trotro carry? An average trotro. It, it, it depends the car. Okay. Yeah. It, you know, we have sprinter, we have uh, a haze, we have uh, uh, the uh, a yalolo, a different type of car. So uh, each car has a, a role. Okay. I think uh, some, which one which one is the most some, uh, which one is the most train. popular? Hello. Hello. Sorry, which one is the most popular uh, vehicle among the trotros now? Oh, uh, most popular is a uh, Splinter. Okay, so let's use that. Um, how many people will that Splinter take? Uh, a row is 4-4. Four, 4-4, four. Four, four. okay. Mm -hmm. So which means that for that, you need one person? Yes, no, please, the 4 means that one will be here, one will be here. So it means one, one row will be two. Two, two. And if there are about five rows, mm -hmm. then two times five, ten. ten. Oh, and, and how many people in all would you have in a, a splinter, if the, if the splinter bus is four? If it's four, it's uh, 22. 22. Uh, we, uh, we have sizes. We have long sizes and the 25-seater so the, the and the 27-seater uh, and the 23-seater. Uh, and we have 
uh, this thing also, uh, 17 sitar also, it's th three different kinds. So, so 24, you say, I mean, 24, 26. when it's four? I mean, we have uh, the, the double tie, uh, long charges. You have the uh, long charges and you have, you have the short charges. Mm -hmm. So the long charges is taking uh, 27. 27. And the 28 will move the uh, driver and meet 25. It, uh, and we have uh, 23 sitar also. Mm. Okay, so, so it's very different. Uh, so, if you take, say, the 27 seater, what you're saying, um, uh, Dr. Chandakwa, is that if you take the 27 seater that he's talked about, then you probably divide that into two. Yes. And then you're going to get 12. Yes. A maximum of 12 people yes. in the splinter bus so, that will normally take 27. Yes. Um, let me ask you, Mr. Kuma, if that is what it takes to help deal with the coronavirus, where a splinter bus that takes 24, 27, will now have to take only 12. What's I'm your reaction sure that, to that? I, I'm not sure that all of us, we are, you want to help the, the distance, but I'm not sure that uh, not, not, no car can use that number to work, because mm -hmm. if we are loading to a, a end from here to a, a car to a car, if you load, the money you collected, you use half the uh, half of the money to form by the fuel, pay your due uh, booking fee and distance and go and if you are coming, the house will be your your normal distance and uh, uh, the or uh, your family return also will be the expenses. So for a car taking about twenty five sita come now coming to take about twelve, I'm not sure that the fuel itself can contain the distance. So uh, unless we, uh, we sit down and, and check about it. Very interesting, Doc. Well, yeah. What's your reaction to that? See, with this one, that's where we need government intervention. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is right, because the commercial driver, uh, vehicle owner expects some profits. Mm -hmm. Now, if you reduce it to meet the social distancing that we're talking about, to prevent this, many, this, uh, this pandemic, that means that they have to be at loss, and they cannot be at loss. That's where government has to come in. So what, how can government do? You can say that I'm reducing fuel price by 50% mm. for commercial vehicles so that they can commute if there's not going to be locked down. Okay? So if they're going to reduce the fuel prices, that means that they can make do because the fuel is the main component that is into their profits. So that's the dynamics we have to look at. So that's where everywhere that they are doing this lockdown, the government must come in to support the entities. Let me bring in the scientists. Uh, Dr. Moisi, what's your reaction to all that? No, I think it's uh, really apt what um, the panelists have just mentioned. And it just tells you the complexity that we have to deal with if we should um, move towards a lockdown or we should make um, or, or put in place uh, the recommended measures for um, physical distancing in public transportation. When it becomes clear that the amount of money that will be realized will not even cover for the cost of fuel, it tells you that it is um, not feasible to do this. Um, but the, the other thing would be, okay, even if government should step in and decide to um, offer a, a rebate on the cost of fuel for commercial vehicles, just the, the sheer process of implementing this would be a massive challenge. So, um, in my view, what we really need to do uh, at, at a higher level will be perhaps to start with asking all um, businesses that do not provide an essential service if they can, or not if they can, but as, as far as possible, to, to shut down and to cease operating. People who are, um, you know, doing um, jobs or um, engage in activities which do not necessarily require for them to move around um, should be stopped from doing so, um, so that at least the number of people who need to move can be reduced. Um, on the other hand, if you think about really enforcing the, the, the social distancing not yet not being possible, you may want to move to uh, some of the measures that have already been recommended by the Ghana Health Service uh, regarding 
um, how we should behave in public transportation. And I know there's been a lot going around on social media on some of these steps that should be mm. taken. Um, I could go through a couple of them and really explain what each of them mean. But the key here is an attempt to reduce contact with individuals and an attempt to uh, reduce uh, the, the spread of the virus by people talking and uh, by people making contact with surfaces. Um, so really pushing home that message to, to people that stay at home if to the best of your ability, even if you, you will certainly lose, but it is better than putting yourself at risk of not only contracting the disease, but spreading it. But it is clear, you can see from my submissions that there is no easy solution to this. So let, let me, on the back of that, let me ask you, and this is from a, a scientific point of view, is it absolutely necessary that we reduce the numbers in the car? Isn't there another way that we can, another alternative to still having the numbers and reducing the potential spread? Yes, there, there, there are ways we can do this. And this is what I was talking about um, by way of the steps that have been mm -hmm. um, outlined to reduce um, the, the, the spread. I saw a very interesting picture just before coming on um, to your show of someone who had um, tethered a Veronica bucket to the top of a trotro and um, sort of piped it all the way through a tap right at the entrance of the trotro. So I suppose you wash your hands before it gets in the trotro. Of course, mm -hmm. that's a very extreme measure, which would take quite a lot of engineering to implement across all our public transportation systems. But simple things like um, sanitizing the hands before entering into the public transportation is a good thing. Having your nose mask. Uh, and I've seen people trying to use hand handkerchiefs. These are hardly helpful. And it perhaps may even worsen the spread, uh, to say the least, but preferably having the N95 mask or otherwise a regular surgical mask while you're in the trot trot, certainly, certainly reducing the talking as much as possible. If you don't need to talk, don't talk and do discourage people from, from talking. Um, try to reduce contact with people as much as possible. Now, how can you do that when there's four people on a row of varying sizes, this becomes very difficult to do. Um, people have recommended things like making sure that the windows are open. This is great because the, the more the ventilation, the the the, the less the risk of of, of, of things settling and and and, um, and and making contact with people. So these are some of the things avoiding touching the face. Of course, when you're climbing the trotter, you can hardly do this hands free unless you're really really fit. You would have to hold on to something. Uh, so avoid touching your, your your face, particularly your eyes and your mouth um, when you are in the trot trot. These are some of the things that we need to push. We can, for example, have this information uh, printed in large print, made freely available to uh, trot trots at the stations and have it pasted right at the entrance of the trot trot, pasted inside the trot trot, you know, where people can see and visualize. Um, it, these can be converted into cartoons so that people can see, even if they cannot read English or cannot even read the local language, at least the visuals would help them to know what is going on. Um, and having these, you know, blown up and, and, and displayed at uh, bus stops, at trotro stations, these are some of the things we can start doing now. But they are hardly as effective as actually avoiding, um, you know, having the number of people we currently have in our public transportation. And it's clear from our discussion that it's very difficult to, to achieve this uh, physical distancing in, in our current public transportation system. Dr. Chadakwa, so we have a situation where we don't have enough government-run transportation, the BRT system. So we, we have the Yalolo buses, for example, the predominant mode of transportation. It's easier to do it in a bus lane because it's government-backed, and so then you could. But ours is dominated by a private sector. Um, but we all know we are at a place where we cannot afford not to do this. You heard the GPL2 say, if that's what it takes when you explain the distancing, then we simply cannot do it. You proposed government reduce the, the, the full cost. That is that, by 50%. That is, I see, it's almost impossible to do. Um, we, we have to explore options. Yes. From all that you've heard, beyond the reduction of the transportation and knowing how our system is, what are the other options are there? The best option to solve this problem, if one talk about the spread and transportation, it is not only even by the, the long 
uh, long chassis buses. Mm. But let's talk about the taxis. Goodness me, we haven't even talked the about that. The taxis are there, and look at the taxis. These, these multis, the smaller ones, with the driver picks about four people, and or three people, the bus is choked. And that particular bus, a small taxi, can pick only one more. So for, for me, the best way is that if there's going to be a permanent lockdown mm -hmm. for two weeks, not, no movement at all, just give about two days, three days notice where people should do their shopping, we have to close down the country completely for two weeks. So people won't use transport at no all? No transport at all. But that would mean um, to take a, they will take it, the transportation, the transport operators will take a hit anyway because they won't have any it's, passengers. It's going to affect everybody. No, come, nobody is at all except those who are doing the essential services. And then again, people who have their own vehicles, that one on one vehicle, like you can drive to work, and those that you, you can leave you to drive. But to allow the taxis to work, the trotters to work, and the long distance buses to work, it is going to amount to huge spreading of the risk. Like we said, we cannot allow the bus to go with only a bus picking about 65 people, going to carry only about uh, 18 people or 20 people. It's going to make a huge loss. Mm. For a huge loss, don't go. If you don't go, no fuel is being uh, incurred, cost is being incurred, no uh, depreciation is going to be incurred, no salary, nothing. Then we hold everything for two weeks. And then, like the medical experts are telling us, with a two weeks lockdown, everything will come to a halt. Then we can open up the transport system again. Else, that's the way, way we, can, we can go. Uh, Mr. Kumar, let me ask you whether the GPLTU uh, is in favor of that option, the option of uh, a lockdown that would mean that you you wouldn't have you you would, it's essentially the transportation will ground to a halt anyway there will be no transport because you have anybody any passengers to operate for for at least two weeks or three weeks whatever um, time frame the president decides is that something that the GPL to you can can work with uh, you, you know that we are all Ghanaians so if there's the measures that we can't deny the measures and uh, if the, the car is parking, and if I'm going a, a banker, the banker knows that with these two weeks, the lockdown, they can't come and ask me to uh, come and pay money in, in the bank. Mm. Lots of the cars are uh, uh, high pitches. You get me? So mm. <clears throat> if the car is not going to work, mm. everybody knows that the car is not working. So the, 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 the place we take the loan, and so they know that uh, this time, because of the, the sickness, no one is working. So they can't come and uh, force that it's come to take money from you. You got me? Yes. So for, for, for us, yeah, so far as we are nine years, we are all thinking about how we will make sure that the secrets won't uh, spread. So the, any decision the government takes for uh, the secrets to make this, then you, you are bound with the, uh, the, the decision. Let me ask you, you touched on something there. What sort of government support will you need in this time to make this work? To, to be able to help with the fight, the way the proposals have come? Well, what sort of help? Uh, I, I think we discussed, and we are going to meet on Friday. We talked that uh, if the uh, center, if the road is four, uh, sometimes you can remove one for the road to be three or something like that and, and manage it. And, but how you, uh, uh, your man is uh, explaining uh, the thing, mm -hmm. uh, you turn back, taking about 46 or uh, 15, but you take about 18 or this thing. If you are comply with this, uh, the poor, they can't take the this thing. Take mm -hmm. uh, Takrady mm -hmm. to uh, uh, Accra. And the bus taking uh, 45 or 60. And you, you are saying that it, it's going to take about 18 or 20. The, the poor taking the bus to uh, Takrady said, it, it will be this thing. So it will be difficult. So if you discuss it and uh, they decided to lock down or to make this down, uh, so far as we are Ghanaians, any measures they put in place, you are bound with this. Would you need government help so that you can at least survive during a period? And what sort of help? Yeah, I, 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 we know that the help is, if we are talking, we are, we are, every day we are talking about the fuel. Okay. Because if, if you load, the money you take from the passengers, you use that money to buy a fuel. You get me? To the, the place we are going. So going, your income, uh, uh, going to be uh, the expenses are coming 
you use that one also for the, your sales and your uh, edition. So for the car taking about uh, 45 sita, and now it's going to take about 10 or 15. I, I think I'm not, I'm not sure that you can uh, survive. You, you had something to say when we were talking about the loans, for example. That's another place government can help. Sure, sure. Yes. Sure. I mean, if I, if the it? government can see the bankers for us also, got a lot of cars, hard pitches. So we are, we are paying a, a government for the bank. So if there is something like that, we can't get money to go and pay. Stay with me, um, Mr. Kuma. Yes. So he's talking about financial, uh, uh, financial freeze, a loan freeze, where uh, all the banks will support government's intervention mm -hmm. by not going ahead letting the people who they have loaned to continue to be paying the loans. That means that the loan system or the banking system is also going to be locked up. Yes. So that anybody who owes the bank for a two weeks period will not be counted. It will not be counted at all. That whether you have defaulted payment. When it, the banks also agree to come into uh, the assistance of government in this direction, there will be harmony. Mm. Let, let me bring in Dr. Moichi. Dr. Moichi, I have heard the, the suggestion about the lockdown. Where do you stand on that question is, is that the are the alternative to explore um it, it is a um, sober um a, a question that requires sober reflection which which i've been doing and really uh, at a personal level just putting down some notes um myself on what a lockdown will require and for me with a lockdown um to to put to be very direct with you i think it is needed um, sooner than later, mm. for various reasons. One is the evidence that we have from the um, impact of a lockdown on the spread of this particular disease in countries uh, that have, have suffered much more than we are about to suffer. Um, those who started too late suffered intensely. Even those who started a little earlier than the others are suffering. Mm. Um, it is very clear that locking down is the way to go. But as has been said in other places, the question is, the, the medicine doesn't have to be worse than the disease. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's two things. One, the lockdown has to achieve its purpose. And secondly, the final impact of the lockdown doesn't have to be worse than what would have happened if we had not locked down. Now, to achieve its purpose, there's, again, two things in there. One is the duration of the lockdown, and the other is what happens within the lockdown. Mm. Now, the objective of lockdown is to, one, prevent spread and to easily identify those who have disease. Now, if you should lock down and do nothing, what will happen is those who have the disease will run, the disease will run its course, and they will recover. The you know, four, six percent who will die will die, and then the disease will run its course. However, what you want to do to make the lockdown as effective as possible is to combine this with massive um, community wide testing. Mm. And the question is do we have the kits available now? Even if we do, do we have the capacity to deploy people to do this? testing what algorithm will we use because of course we can't test 100 percent of the population it we will have to apply a sampling approach to this and and, and as scientists we we know the ways in which we, we go about doing this and the country has experience doing this in, in in various ways from immunization programs to our polio coverage um, programs to uh, even our census uh, national census that we conduct so um People have been calling for a two-week shutdown. For me, it is very clear as a scientist that two weeks will hardly have any effect. Mm -hmm. And in infectious disease, one thing that's really dangerous is to suppress a disease and not to do it enough to the point where you break the disease and to lift your hand. Because what you will have will be what we call the spring back effect mm. or the, 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 the recoil, mm. the coil effect where it gets even worse than what it was before and you were actually better off having done nothing. And, and, and from the little we've seen, even from other countries, two weeks will not cut it. How long will will be now? From what I have seen, uh, from what other countries have done and the impact, at, at the very least a month is what is needed. However, however, 
um, it is very clear to have a 100% total lockdown um, for, for one month is, is going to be a very difficult endeavor. So there will have to be some caveats in there, some you know bolts and nuts that you tighten here and there within that one month plus. But what I can say with a fair amount of confidence is that two weeks will not cut it. It will end up doing more harm than good, both in terms of the losses we incur um, during the shutdown as well as the eventual rebound of the disease after a two-week period, which is insufficient. And the other thing, as I, which I mentioned before, is ensuring that we are rolling out our testing algorithm along with the shutdown. And I think these are the things that may be delaying a decision because you don't just want to wake up and do a lockdown, not being ready to implement it properly and not reaping the benefits and at, at the same time taking the losses of a lockdown. I'm going to take a break. When I return, I'll speak to my guest, uh, Dr. Shad Dakwa, the GPRTU. Maybe this is exposing the weaknesses in our transportation uh, structure. We'll talk broadly about what the big picture should be. Y using it's a crisis, yes, but it's possibly exposed us. And there are big changes that must happen uh, because we are learning, of course, now that um, if this, if we begin the testing, we'll probably find that this is worse than we thought, and the transportation will be a big, big part of spreading this. When we come, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that. Stay with us. It's still live on PM Express tonight. My guest uh, in the studio is Dr. Godfrey Dachar Dakwa. He is the uh, road safety and transportation consultant. Also joining me as on, on, the, on Skype is Dr. John Amoisi. He's a lecturer, Global Health Department, KNUST, and also you've been also been uh, listening to the chairman of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union. You know they have deep concerns. Uh, joining me now is Dr. Dennis Laye. He's a national coordinator for Port Health at the Ghana Health Service. Hello, Dr. Laye. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let me quickly uh, ask you what's the what's the update as far as Port. Uh, health is concerned. I mean, uh, we know that this country, our ports are absolutely critical. Um, some say, well, it's just about goods and services mainly. And so there's nothing to fear there. What's your reaction to that? Thank you very much. And good evening to your um, listeners and the viewers as well. I think that the issue of uh, our ports came up quite strongly at the earlier stages. Mm -hmm. And, and the measures we put in place as, as part of preventing outbreaks in, in Ghana, um, including strengthening our surveillance at the point of entry. Mm -hmm. The president did indicate in his address to the nation that all borders, land, sea, and air will be closed to passengers, and only goods won't come in. Mm. So I think that in line with that directive, we've seen quite a drastic decline in activities as far as sport health is concerned. Indeed, I know that there are some flights that come into Ghana empty to actually take um, citizens of some countries which have decided to evacuate their, their um, citizens. And, and about that, we heard that uh, the U.S., the U.K., uh, have all uh, evacuated their citizens from Ghana. Is that true? Yeah, quite a number of countries are aware. There's a list. I can't give you the, the specifics mm. because I saw the mail where there was indication of some countries coming to pick their residents um, in Ghana to their respective countries. So I know that that is happening. But again, we have to bear in mind that the concern is about people coming in and not people going out. Mm. So... Um, and these, I believe, have gone through some processes to get approval uh, from government before those can happen. I, I, I think as far as air travel goes, you can't get things so easily done um, if you compare it to land travel, like using vehicles and all. Yeah. So I'm sure that the necessary process is done. So as far as we at the point of entry mm -hmm. are concerned, um, it's not as it was a few weeks ago. But of course, we also have to, I, I believe that we are aware of information about 
some people try to cross illegally. Yes, I mean, people, I, people putting themselves on buses and trying to smuggle, some using uh, motorbikes, uh, etc. We've heard the reports about some arrests. Has that improved? I, I think that uh, particularly with the issues to do with security, I probably would want to, to pass that on to their security services. But I was notified at least of one incident by one of our uh, heads at the point of entry, at one of the point of entry, where somebody was arrested and they were they had to uh, do an assessment in terms of health for the person. Mm -hmm. Because whatever it is, the person has entered the country and you need to assess the health risk as well, beyond the security things as well. So that that we, given a situation like that, we will do it. But it doesn't mean that we've gone um, to rest. Because our staff in Kutuka, for example, all the people who are departing on these um, specially arranged flights will still have to go through the health screening um, that was being done before this flight ban. So there is some work um, going on, but definitely not at the level that we saw pre um, the presidential directive to ban air, land, and sea travel to Ghana. Okay, um, thank you very much, Dennis, uh, for joining us. Uh, I want to come back to uh, Dr. Godfrey Dachinadakwa. Uh, so we are learning currently that our transportation network and a system that we've had for so long is, is exposing us. Yes. And the coronavirus is exposing us yeah. quite badly. If we get through this, what, does, what, what challenges is this telling us that we have with our system that we need fixing? Yeah, I think our transport organizations need to be unified or be under one organization, the National Transport Coordinating Council. Mm. That would make sure that they help the organization of the so many uh, uh, radical unions mm -hmm. that are operated and come out with their strict regulations. Now, we were advocating for National Road Authority, okay? And now, National Road Safety Commission has been given the authority, but we did the transport, coordinated, transport authority. That will hold all the unions into special or organized perspective, such a way that they, they report to one mother organization. Mm. And they would liaise with government properly and then try to structure things the way it is done everywhere. I mean, so, so th there's that. That's about structure. Yes. But there's also the, the, the way things are organized. There's a lot of, as we've seen, a lot of these buses that we are now talking about reducing the numbers. Originally, they, don't, they didn't have these numbers when the manufacturers manufactured them. We know the yeah. buses sure, come sure, in. Sure, sure, sure. And then they, they, we take it to mechanics and then they cannibalize it and they turn it into something else. That is a problem. I mean, that is what we... So we have overloading a lot of our buses because yeah. they, they put in seats there that were not supposed to be there in the first exactly place. Exactly so. And even some of them were not meant for carrying passengers. They are meant to carry goods. They come into the country, the country and these mechanics are made to fit in with seats. And you see, vehicles that carry... Vans that carry uh, goods are lighter that do that carry human beings. Mm, mm. Okay? So as a result, when you try to modify it against the people, the original manufacturer's purpose, you try to put the passengers into jeopardy, I mean, lives into jeopardy. That is why when vehicles are mostly collides, or they will collide, we see so many people dying. Mm. So it all boils down to a, a proper organization where we have an, uh, an authority, transport of the road transport authority, that will make sure that the right things are done. But as of now, it is under the purview of the DVLA. Now, if you, if you try to create more seats in your vehicle that are not, or that is at variant with what is originally supposed to be, the DVLA has the powers to try to let you uh, not uh, license that vehicle. But are they doing it? That's where we have to go, the compliance. Are they doing it? If they're not, I think the coordinated authority has to come in and do this one as well. Let me come in finally with uh, Mr. Kwame Kuma. Mr. Kwame Kuma, I wonder, in all this, what reaction are you getting from your members across the country? Uh, about, about the... Uh, about the, the coronavirus the, the, and, and the, the changes you need to implement. Well, what reaction are your members giving you? Are, are they worried? And what sense are you getting from your members? Oh, uh, a lot of people are worried. And they are calling me, asking me, 
what are you going to do for them to survive and this and and they, this uh, everybody's supposed to uh, to try and help for them to uh, make sure that they, this sickness is is not going to be this. So this is not uh, this is everybody's supposed to try and help the government to to survive all of our affairs to survive. So the measures which we will put in place for us to all of us to be safe, you know, I will make sure that I'm, I know that all of them will be comply about that. So for that one, they let us uh, meet on Friday with the ministry, and after discussion about the ministry, mm -hmm. we'll come out, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that everybody will comply. I'm grateful, uh, Kwame Kuma, for your time here on PM Express. Uh, I want to bring in um, uh, the, of course, a friend from the KNUSC who is also joining us on on this particular important conversation as we wrap up. I mean, so clearly, I think it's clear to me that we don't have an option than to do something, either lock down or get the uh, vehicles to space out. Um, but as that decision approaches, we've heard GPLT say. Friday, they are going to make an announcement on what to happen. There's an option also of doing a total lockdown. From a health point of view, though, um, the transportation, we talk about transportation, what, what should passengers know going into this next one week or two weeks when we expect the cases to spike? No, thanks, Evans. Uh, what I would say is that passengers should be aware of the risk that they face in um, going on public transportation. Once there is this awareness of the risk, it will reduce patronage, albeit at an, at, at an economic cost, um, by those who really do not have to. Um, they will stay at home. For those who really must, at least having a hand sanitizer and a mask that's about the least that you could do. Uh, it will be close to foolhardy to get onto public transportation without having a hand sanitizer ready or handy uh, or not having a mask ready or handy. It might cost a bit, but I would recommend to everyone it's a worthwhile investment to make uh, and the least you could do to protect yourself. And certainly what we spoke about, you know, reducing the touching of the face, especially the nose and the eyes and the mouth, at the very least, while you are in that public transportation and are busy touching the surfaces while you're seated, touching the surfaces while you're um, climbing the, the public transportation and descending, this is about the least that you, you, you can do. And uh, certainly, uh, let's do our best to follow whatever instructions are provided as we move down this, this road. Um, there will be very painful decisions to take at the individual level, but also at the population level. And all these, we hope, will um, result in in what we hope, which is to quickly get over mm -hmm. this. But if we don't bite the bullet now, we will have to live with a lot worse. Thank you very much. That is uh, uh, Dr. John Amoisi there with the uh, KNUST's Electro Global Health uh, Department of the University. Also uh, with me in the studio, uh, Dr. Godfrey at China.com. I'm grateful uh, for joining me as a transport consultant. You, you also heard, uh, obviously, earlier the GPLTU national uh, private president, GPLTU president, also join us, and the uh, Dr. Dennis Lai with the GHS Ghana Health Service Port Health. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Just be when you're out there using public transport tomorrow. Uh, just follow the advice you just had there uh, from Dr. Amoisi and keep safe. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>